Now we're going to look at the Arduino within Tinkercad and wire up a breadboard circuit to connect a switch input to the Arduino. I have an open Tinkercad sketch here, an empty one. I'm going to drag out a breadboard small, which closely corresponds to the breadboards that we use in the lab, a push button, a resistor, and I'm going to switch to uh, scroll down and find an Arduino Uno, and then scroll down even further and find a multimeter. The Arduino has a USB connection that is your, normally used for power and data from a host computer. We can also use it to a limited degree as a power supply. If you note, the, the bottom row of pins in this view of the Arduino has a 5 volt terminal and several ground terminals. That 5 volt is, can be used as a, power, a 5 volt power supply as long as we don't draw too much current. So what is common in these exercises is we, make, we put a connection between the 5 volt pin and one of the bus pins in the top row of the breadboard. In practice, this will be a physical jumper wire. Here it's a simulated wire. And then also add a connection from one of the several ground pins to a ground bus in the lower row of the breadboard. So now we have some power available on the board and I can go ahead and start to wire up the switch circuit. I'm gonna move a resistor onto the breadboard such that one leg is in the plus five row and move the push button switch down such that one of the one terminals, here the 1B terminal, is in the same row as the other leg of the resistor. I can then add a wire from one of the two side terminals to ground. So here I'll take a, a pin, a wire in the same row as the 2A pin and wire that down to ground. Just so we can see what this will do, I'm going to take a multimeter, wire the positive terminal to the same row as the resistor leg and the negative terminal to the same row as the minus side. So just to see that, we're going to go ahead and start the simulation. We see that what is happening now is the switch has not been pressed, it's open, and the resistor is pulling up this row to 5 volts, the supply voltage. When I press the switch, the voltage drops. The switch is closed, it conducts current, it connects that same pin now to ground, and the, some current flows to the resistor, but the, but the pin stays at 0 volts. So now we have a way to transduce the press of a switch into a variable voltage. Go ahead and stop the simulation. And now we're going to connect that same row, which is a node that has, is between the resistor and the switch, to one of the input pins on the Arduino. There's a number that we can use, but we're going to just pick 7. Just to show that, that this particular row of the Arduino has 14 pins that can all be used for input or output, although some of them have some special purposes. The bottom two are used for the serial port, some of them have a little squiggle, little tilde sign. That means they have special PWM capabilities. For now, just rest that we'll use pin 7 as a, as a generic digital input. So now we can go ahead and open up the code editor to see what's happening inside the Arduino. It came up with a default uh, program that I'm just going to grab these blocks and drag them to the trash. There's a trash icon in the lower corner. And we'll start fresh. So basically, we want to read the pin and then either turn the LED on or off, depending on the value. So this is a basic sort of control structure. I'm going to drag out an if-then-else block, and then go to the output section, and then say set built-in LED to high in one branch, or set LED to low in the other branch. We're not going to use the blocks editor much, but it gets the point across for this particular demo as a simple way to build some very conditional logic. So now we need an, a way to read the Arduino input. If you look at the input section, there's a read digital pin operator, which has an oval shape. So this yields a value. I can set the menu to input pin 7, and then this, in the context of the blocks, will read the pin and return a, a value, which is either 0 or not 0, depending on whether the voltage is low or high. We do need an operator to turn that into a Boolean. If you look in the uh, math section, the second down had this funny sort of diamond shape. We can drop the read input onto the left side as the input and then change the operator to be greater than and change the number to be zero. So now if the digital input is a low voltage, it'll read a zero and the output of this operator will be false. If it has some non-zero value, it'll be greater than zero, then uh, that represents that the voltage is high, then that will pr pr produce a Boolean true. This can then be inserted into the block for the, um, the conditional, and we have our full program. At this point, I can go ahead and start the simulation 
and the code will run. And now we see that, I'm um, sorry, I'm gonna close the code editor briefly so we can see what's happening. Now we have five volts input coming into the Arduino and the, the, LED, the onboard LED is lit. If I push the switch, then we will short out that resistor in effect, bring that voltage down to zero volts. The Arduino will read that as a zero value, a digital zero, a low value, and then the conditioner will treat that as false and then the LED will go off. So we haven't done much here except basically use a lot of hardware to allow a switch to control an LED, but through programmatic means, but that opens the door to all kinds of other software manipulations. I'm gonna reopen the code editor and then very quickly change it from the, uh, sorry, stop the simulation, change it from the blocks mode to the text mode. I get a warning that I'm gonna lose my blocks in doing this, but that's fine. because I wanna see the actual underlying program text. If we look at it now, we have a two functions, a set of function and a loop function, which corresponds to the sort of initialization and then the operation of our program. Without going into the details quite yet, pin mode for seven declares that it's an input, pin mode for 13 declares it's an output. 13 is the pin corresponding to the built-in LED. And then in the loop function, we can see a little bit of code that executes again and again, where the digital read function reads the value of the input pin, and then there's an if-then-else structure to either set the LED high or low. Tinkercad also inserts a small delay here, which uh, we can come back to another time. So there we go, we have built a simple breadboard circuit to hold a switch and uh, resistor to build a switch input circuit that turns a button press into a variable voltage and then read that as a number on the Arduino and use that to control the program.